So here we are in part three. This is a quick little screenshot of what you should be looking at on your handout. We see that there are five groups who are working together. They tested uh, different temperatures and they wanted to see how high the geyser goes. So they tried it for Diet Coke, then they tried it for regular Coke. So you could think of all the Diet Coke as trial one, all the regular Coke as trial two. But the main uh, independent variable is the temperature. They chose to test it at four degrees Celsius, 58, 22, 12, whatever. So that's going to go in our left-hand column. That's their independent variable, what they, they chose to test. So we're going to put a header up here. We could put temperature, uh, degrees Celsius. Don't fight trying to get the little degree sign up there. We'll take care of that when we get into uh, Microsoft Word. But put a header, temperature, degrees Celsius, and then remember, only put uh, numbers. The problem with the data table that you're looking at on your handout, or the one over here on the screen, is that there are words next to every single number, or letters at least with the units. The computer does not know what to do with those uh, letters, and it doesn't treat the numbers as numbers when there's letters tied next to them. So don't do uh, letters and numbers together in the same box if you want the computer to do something mathematical with them or graph them. Okay, so next up, we try Diet Coke. And we saw how high it went, so we're going to convert the data and just put numbers in each of the cells. And then we ran another trial with regular Coke. And this is going to turn out to be a two-line line graph. One line for the Diet Coke and one line for the regular Coke. And then we can compare the two lines and see if there's any differences between the, uh, the two different types of sodas. So we've got our data table. What we want to do now is highlight our data. And if we try to graph it, remember we're going to do scatter and the points with the smooth curves, we end up with some weird lines here. So we don't want to do that. And the reason that's coming out weird is because it's not sorted. So we need to sort it. So delete that. Let's go back here. We want to sort just the numbers. So highlight the numbers from the top left to the bottom right. So now it's going to sort it by temperature, which is what we want. Always go top left, bottom right. So click sort. Sort from smallest to largest. And there we go. And just check your numbers. Make sure the uh, values are still the same. Although what happened here? Was that a typo? 589. Okay, that looks better. So now if we try to graph this, highlight it all, go to insert, scatter, Remember, whenever you think line, choose scatter. Don't choose regular line. So pick scatter, and there we go. And that looks much better. And we can definitely see that there's a trend. And Diet Coke looks like it goes a little bit higher than the regular Coke. So again, just like normal, we want to fix up our graph. There's lots of things we need to do here. So we're first going to put a title on this thing. So let's... Make sure we click in the graph, make sure Chart Tools is highlighted, click Layout, go to Chart Title, and we can put one above the chart. Um, the relationship between the temperature and the height of the geyser. And then put your name. And again, it got, it got kind of squished here. Looks like I had an extra space. So my graph looks kind of small. It would be very hard for me to look and give you an accurate point here uh, for that red line just by eyeballing it. So if I stretch it, now I look at the red line and it's a little bit easier to see exactly where it falls. So make sure you make your graphs nice and big, stretch them afterwards, and try to fill up the whole paper. So we've got a title on the big guy, that's good, and we also need titles on the two axes. So go back here, go to axes titles, the horizontal, I want to put it below. This down here stands for the temperature, and you always have to have, whenever you have a number, you're going to have the, uh, the thing that you're measuring, which is in this case temperature, and then we're going to have degrees Celsius, and... On the left hand side, we're going to put in height of geyser, and then in centimeters. 
Now we look over here at the key and we see that it already indicates that the blue line stands for Diet Coke and the uh, red line stands for regular Coke. Now remember I said before, I don't want you to play around with colors. If you want to see the colors uh, just on your screen, that's fine. They can be different colors like this. But even if you print it out in just the gray scale, you're going to see that the Diet Coke will be represented by diamonds, where the regular Coke will be represented by squares or little rectangles. So don't worry too much about playing with colors. Uh, it'll give you a different shape to indicate each line. So that should serve as your key. Remember, you don't want to kill your ink cartridges at home or at school. So a few more little things that we want to do to this. First, we want to put some uh, grid lines in. So we're going to click on Layout, Grid Lines. We're going to have the vertical ones in, the major ones. The directions also say that you want to change the x-axis to go up by 5 degrees instead of 10. So if you click on the axis down here, this window will pop up. It's going to start at 0 and at 70, which is what we see. And it says that the major unit, what it goes up by, is 10. So we're going to click on that and change that to 5. And hit close. And look at the effect that it has on your graph. And we want to change the x-axis to go up to 100. And the y-axis to go up to 1,000. So you're going to double click again. Go back here. And instead of now it's ending at 65, let's change it to 100 degrees. Oops. Close. And then the y-axis, we want to go up to 1,000. So double click on that. See where it's supposed to end at 900? It says ends at 900 over here. The maximum that it goes up to is 900. Let's change that max. Let's make it 1,000. And if I look at my graph, it looks a little squished. So I'm going to take this guy here and I'm going to stretch it a little bit. And now it looks a little bit better. So just pull it, adjust it. I have plenty of room <clears throat> to figure out other variable or other values if I want. If I want to extrapolate anything or extend these lines, um, and everything else looks good. So the first thing we need to do is bring over the data. So again, this doesn't look great. This is just on scrap paper. So I'm going to highlight the data. I'm going to copy it. And I am going to go over to my Word. I'm going to hit Enter a bunch of times. And then go back up. Leave a line or so from the top of the page. And then paste it in. That's a sad looking data table. So I have some things to fix up here. So I'm going to highlight the entire table by clicking on that square. Go over here. And you can put borders around everything. And now we can start to move stuff around. We'll stretch this a little bit because these aren't great headers the way they are right now. Diet Coke, this could be anything. How many calories in a Diet Coke, how many milliliters you drank in the past week. We have to actually indicate um, what this value stands for. Diet Coke's just not good enough. So we're going to put height of Diet Coke geyser. And then we measure that in centimeters. And let's do the same thing here. Height of regular Coke geyser in centimeters. And let's stretch some stuff some more. It's getting a little bit better here. There's a little degree sign. Remember I said we're going to worry about that later, and now is later. So highlight the degree sign, which is just a basic little zero or a little O, and then hit Control Shift Plus. And if you hit the Control Shift Plus, then that little degree sign uh, gets superscripted. So it's up there now. We want to probably center the whole table so it's in the middle of the uh, page. Highlight all the data, and the headers for that matter. But highlight everything inside, make sure there's no overhanging blue, and center it. And then maybe highlight the headers up at the top. You bold face them, or you can even make them a little bit bigger than the rest of the, uh, the font there. And that's it. So now we're going to get to the graph. So go back to Excel. Click on the graph somewhere. Hit Control C. And bring it over here. And hit Paste. And there's your graph. And you can resize this if you want. You can make it bigger and smaller so it fits in between uh, your text that you're writing. So the last thing I want to do is uh, take care of this little degree sign. 
There's a little O down there. It's uh, a normal O. I want to turn it into a degree sign. So I highlight it, hit Control Shift Plus, and there it goes. So don't worry about any of that formatting business in Excel in terms of superscripting and subscripting things. Just type out the numbers or letters or symbols, and then afterwards when you bring it over to Word, you can attack it there. The last thing for this assignment, just go back and indicate uh, which part you're dealing with here. So this is part one. Um, tell me this is part two. And then finally part three. And it's really easy for me to just stick my cursor anywhere and then add things in. You might want to add another paragraph or you might want to add a header or descriptive title or something. Um, and if you hit the, uh, the enter bar a bunch of times like I had asked you to in the beginning, then you have the ability to do that. If you don't hit the enter bar, then your graph is going to be locked up right against your table and you're not going to be able to separate them uh, easily. So make sure that you do hit the enter bar or enter uh, button. It makes a world of difference. And then if you find you hit the enter uh, button too many times, just highlight all that excess space so you're not printing out extra blank pages. You can see I hit it a lot. You don't have to hit it this many times. I did it because every time I added something new, I wanted to stress that and show it one more time. But just hit it a few times and you're good. And that should be it. So you're going to turn in uh, this document all stapled together. Make sure your name is on it. And uh, you've got the data table and the graph for each of these three parts.